Hey y'all, welcome back to Guitar Builders and Collectors. So today I'm going to start a new build that I am going to record for you from beginning to end. It is a kit guitar I got from Pango. Um, here it is in its box. I should give you a good view. Boom. And get us a box in a box. Now Boom. I always hang on to this, uh, I guess you just call it really thin styrofoam of some sort, the packing, this stuff, because makes for soft landing for your, ooh, I like this, it's a quilted maple top, mahogany body, it's the PRS style. Oh, that's good. Fresh smelling wood. Boy, that smells great. May have to take a little sanding to it, but there's the body. There's the neck. The PRS birds, bone nuts. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Looks like a rosewood fretboard, mahogany neck. Yeah, yeah. This was paid for. They didn't send it for free. So, and in these kits, they typically, from this Pango music, they will give you a pre-wired harness so comes already somewhat pre-wired you got your two little dime size pots one with a capacitor this only has one tone one volume and a three-way switch so not too complicated on the electronics i like that uh, especially this they wrapped the bridge and everything pretty decently. Um, yeah. And it looks like it's all here. I always like to leave stuff in these bags until I'm ready for it. Cord. Let me show you what I do with those cords. Boom. See all that? That's what I do with the cords. First thing you got to do is you want to tape these off. It's got a few little ding marks in it from the shipping. If you'll look, I don't know if you can see it. We'll see. If, yeah, you can see it right there. Right there and right there. I'm going to try to sand those out. I hate it when they do that. All right, so I did a little more taping because I'm going to do this a different color, I think. I may not. I'm just doing it here just in case I decide to. That way it saves this. And it won't be the same color. So what I'm going to start with is the Aquamarine. Wait, yeah, Aquamarine uh, Rit dye. That's going to be my base. If it comes out right, like I'm hoping it does, because I'm thinking this wood's going to darken it a little bit. I'm going to get it on there. I'm going to sand it back a little. And then I'm going a darker blue around the outside. So let's get some gloves and get this going. Always want to wear them. Because they will stain your fingers. And it's a pain to get it off. 
So. Yeah, let's put a little teeny tiny tab on there so when you jerk on it, it goes everywhere. Not today, Satan. <laughs> so I'm using just a little rag that I've cut up into pieces. I'm going to fold it down. And that way, I do that because I've tried to use applicators like, like this one that Anglis gives. Man, those just put ink everywhere. The ink runs down the tape. It just, you can't control it. But with these, it's a little more controlled. You know, you're deciding where the ink goes to. So let's go ahead and give this a shot then. Yep, it's going to do what I want it to do. I like that. Better shake this up a little bit more. Okay. Yep, it's going to give me the exact color that I was hoping with. It's a little off. Not too far. Ah, I take that back. Got to work pretty fast with the dye. Otherwise, you'll have some areas darker than others. You can go in circles or typically you want to go with the grain. Um, that's what I try to do. This stuff dries quick, too, so... Be liberal with it. Great. So, there's what we have so far. Now, as that dries, it'll even out a little bit more, but and then I'll put another coat over it. I'll sand this back just a little. And then I'm going to come around. I'm not sure I'm going to sand it back. We'll see how it dries. So, a couple coats on here so far. And that's what we got. Oh, crap. Just got it all over my blank hand. Not bad. Not bad at all. So that is the dye with the, so the wood gets real thirsty when you're using lacquer and polyurethane. So I used some of this tongue oil to seal the wood after I got it dyed. Um, as you can see, that's a pretty wicked looking color. I do like it. I'm getting ready to sand it down a little bit with some 600 grit sandpaper and then the neck uh let's just say i took the advice of someone else and tried a new technique it didn't work out so i'm re resealing this but there's the color of the neck looks like a roasted maple now um, with that honey that's honey dye that i used on there from anglis I will show you uh, right here, honey leather dye. It gives it a really, really nice roasted maple look. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That I got to go over a few times, but you'll see. Yeah. 
and I use that on the back side to give it that roasted maple look too, or roasted mahogany look, sorry. Um, but this got like quite a bit of grit texture to it, so 600 should knock that down. Um, and what I used to get that color was, hold on just a moment, I'll just show you. So I used this aquamarine for the, for the lighter color, and it was blue. And I put this blue for the, the bursting brim or outer rim, you know, that blue. And then what happened was, <laughs> this was a lighter blue. It really was. It was almost the color of what you see on the bottle here. But this stuff has a bit of a yellow tint to it. So that yellow added to that blue gives you that green. I still like it though. I just hope, um, I just hope the person I'm building it for likes it too. Anyways, I had her order this from Pango Music. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I built that white Explorer out of a Pango Music uh, kit. These are much, much better. The wood quality is much better. As you can see, the veneer is really good on this. Um, so I'm gonna use 600 grit on this. Top, I always fold it in half, just lightly sanding. Just to knock off this little grit that's on there from that tongue oil. That tongue oil will seal this so that it doesn't take three, four cans of polyurethane to put a finish coat on here. Because that's what happens when the wood's really thirsty and not sealed like that. And there's something about, you know, putting a little elbow grease into your work. This doesn't take that. <laughs> Just barely across it. Yeah, see, that's already smooth all the way across there. That's probably so. And then again, my hand on the sides because they're curved. That way, you're not taking too much of that off. Use your hand to feel it. See, that's smooth now. And if I would have kept going, I'd have burnt through it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yes, sir. So I'm not going to use the block on this. Do this by hand as well. It's flat. So you just, like I said, I'm barely putting any pressure on. So I don't want to take that sealer, that tongue oil sealer off. A damp washcloth here. And I've got a Now I've seen guys take that tongue oil and do this over and over and over again, 14, 15 days straight. You can already see it's got a sheen on it, right? Okay, so what that's going to allow is when I, because I'm using uh, polyurethane in a spray can. So when I spray that, That'll lay flat. It cuts down on the orange peel. So I don't have to do as much sanding later. But yeah, that's that's smooth. One solid sheet. Um, so I'm going to take this tape out. Glue this together. Um, glue the neck in. I use... Doo -doo -doo, where is it? Right here. I use this tight bond high glue. That's good stuff. Um, I will put that on there. I will use these clamps to set it into place. It will sit for a half hour to dry. Or I will leave the clamps on for a half hour. And then it takes another 24 hours. Now obviously I'll leave the tape on the neck. Because after I get it glued together I'll be spraying it with the polyurethane. That'll make one even coat. Kind of helps sealed in there a little bit more too. Oh. 
once the neck is set, like tomorrow, I will start to uh, apply the polyurethane. I will put that the glue in here, and also I will put some on here. Now, when you do that, you need to have a, a rag handy, damp rag, which I do, same one I wiped it down with, to wipe the excess glue that will push its way out when I put the clamp down on it. You don't want that getting on, you know, like this varnish or anything. You just want to wipe it off. It comes off easy, so. Now, you want to, you don't want to put too much in here, but not too little. Come all the way to the edge with it. And now, we'll put some on the back of here. This is why I like to use dyes, because paint builds up here. When you use paint, you have to sand that down. With this, just pretty much put it in. So if you look, see, I will spread that, make that all even. So the finish on this is coming along real nicely. I just now put another coat of polyurethane on there. Man, that's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Some sanding to do once it dries. And another, probably another coat on top of that. And this is what I'm using. That is good stuff right there. Uh, cheap to only $10 a can. Well worth it. I've used half a can. I've used about a whole can, half of another can and half of this one so far. It's a lot less. I, with the lacquer, I usually have to use about three cans. But I think that has everything in the world to do with putting that over the wood first after it's been dyed. Man, I can't get over how good that looks. Wow, that is gorgeous. So here is the final coat. Pretty sharp. So, I got the finished coat going. Then, so now, hardware and electronics. So, this is the kit's hardware. It's a fixed bridge. Wraparound bridge is what they call that. Jack, post for the bridge, screws, knobs, truss rod cover tuning and the uh, uh, bushings that go with it, uh, strap buttons, wiring harness, two pickups, and a cover. These pickups are weird. Um, so this one is 10, this is the bridge, and it's 10, almost 11. The neck is 12. 12 and a half K that's weird. It sh should be the other way around, but I said I was going to build this one stock with all stock parts and see how it come out. So here is the completed product. Um, polyurethane coat. That's, uh, aquamarine blue and then a light blue on the outer side some tongue oil over that which kind of turned that aquamarine almost uh, a teal green kind of or teal blue thing um then polyurethane over that back of this thing 
This is the Honey Die. And it's J.E.T. Guitars. 